Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at creating health bars in Unity. So uh, I've set up this basic little project here, and all the files that you'll need will be linked down, down below. In fact, the whole project file will be linked in the description down below, so you'll have the same starting point as I have here. So basically, all I've got set up is I have a player, and we have a little bit of a danger area for him to run into and take some damage. And on the player here, we've got a script that controls his health. Um, and if we just hit play here, we'll see if we if you watch his current health down here, and we walk into this box, there we go, our current health goes down whenever we walk into it. So that's all we want as a basic setup. Um, and so we what we want to do is to be able to show on the screen just a simple little uh, bar that will show how much health the player has. Because, for example, at the moment here, we, all we've got is a player walking into a box and that's not really telling us anything because when this game launches we won't have a little number we can watch in the corner here so setting up um, health bars in unity is actually really simple since they've added the ui elements that they added last year i think it was um, and it's a very straightforward thing to do so we're going to take a look at doing that and basically all you have to do is we'll start off we'll go to game object up here and then go to ui and add a slider and if we zoom out here uh, we'll start seeing some stuff. Okay, so the slider, it's appeared down here for me, which is not very useful. This box here basically represents what uh, what is shown in the view of the game. So if we switch back to our game view here, we'll see, okay, there's nothing here at all. We can't see that slider. It's down off to the side here. So what we need to do is we need to move it. So we'll move it over to the top right, say, like this. And if we go back to game, it'll appear up there in the top right. And one of the good things with the UI of, of Unity is, as the scale of things changes, the position items in the in the window will move around with it. And for, for at the moment, by default, it's done by the center of the screen. So if we go to game here, if we were to maximize this, suddenly our slider is kind of here in the middle of nowhere. That's no good to us. So what we'll do is, on the slider, we'll scroll up and we'll go, we'll click on this little box thing here, and we'll move it so that it's... Instead of being at the center, it does everything by the top right. So then it's trying to work out how far away it is from the top right. And if we were to make the game big, now it's still in the top right like that. So perfect. But this is just a slider. If we zoom in on it, we've got like we've got a slider here. Um, and on the slider, it's got a few different values. So it has like a max value and a min value. But we can move the slider up and down like that. Um, so that's you can see almost straight away that this is the basics of a bar. Um, we've got the whole bar itself, we've got what's filling it up, because this is slightly brighter than the darkness that's on the right here. And we've got a handle, which is probably something that we don't really need. On a health bar, you're not really going to have a handle showing everything like that. Um, but by default, we've also got like some graphics representing all this stuff, and we don't want to use those graphics either. So we're going to start by getting rid of those things. So we'll go into our slider here, and we're going to go down to the uh, handle slider area. Um, and we're just going to click on the handle here and we're going to delete that so it's gone straight away but that doesn't affect how the slider works so if we, sli sli uh, if we scroll down on the slider script and move the value it's still going up and down like that so that's perfect that's exactly what we want and um, now we're going to get rid of these little images that represent them so far and replace them with just solid blocks of color because that's really all you need in a bar. I mean, you could have like gradiented stuff and stuff like that, but we won't worry about that. Uh, this is just a, the basic way to do it. Um, so what we'll do is go to the fill area here, um, drop it down and click on fill. And if we go over here to image, we can see we've got a source image here, which is representing the whole the white bit. So we're gonna get rid of that. So we're gonna click on the little circle here beside UI sprite, and we're gonna set it to none. And then immediately it just all fills in white and we don't want it to be just boring white so we'll just make it green which make, kind of represents more of a health bar kind of look uh, and we're going to do the same on the background which is our dark bit back here so we'll go to our background and again we'll get rid of the source image just set it to none and we'll change the color to be a kind of dark red color like that so now if we go back to our slider we can see we've got a little health bar filling up like this it looks more like an actual kind of bar um, and to make it even more look like a bar what we're going to do is add a little frame around it and I've just created a very simple little black frame that will be included in the files as well of course um, and all we have to do is on our canvas 
if we go to game object UI image like that so we're adding an image into the game and then we're going to drag our health bar from our art assets over to the source image here like that we're going to hit preserve aspect so it keeps the right uh, it doesn't stretch out the image because by default we can see it stretches it out horribly like that and we don't want that so we want it to keep the same image and then we want to make it the right size so we'll stretch it out to the edges of the bar like this we can just make it a bit smaller too and then we can just move it into position like that so now it's covering over the edges and now we actually have something that looks a bit more like a bar so if we grab the slider we can drag it up and down we see we've got it more like a bar and if we grab the image we want to make that a child of the slider because we don't if we create a duplicate of the slider for example we want the, our little box image to come with us so we'll drag that on top of slider there like that and it becomes a child and it's one with that whole object now and um, and just as, as an example it's important to remember the order of things within our slider here so uh, the image it, it goes in at the bottom but if we were to put it up at the top like that you can see our image now goes behind our bar so we want to make sure that, that the image stays at the bottom of that pile so that it appears in front to us uh, so that's fine um, but if we go to our slider again and if we slide it up to the maximum value and equally down to the bottom value we see that what we're getting is a little gap at either end and that's that's definitely not what we want at all so the way we can fix that is if we just make it up full like this if we go to our fill um, our fill area I believe yeah and if we just kind of drag that so it goes to the very edges like this and if we go to handle slide area and drag that to there uh, actually got a little bit wrong there we have our handle slide area in the right places but we need to drag this out to the very edges like this and we want to drag our fill area we want to drag it basically all the everything to the edges we want to make sure everything lines up at the edges just like that and now we should see if we go to our slider now if we grab it and scroll it down we go all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top so basically you just want to make sure that everything our fill area goes to either side our fill goes to either either side and our handle slide area um, goes to either side as well so so now we've got our slider we've got a slider set up but of course at the moment it doesn't do anything we scroll up and down like this uh, nothing's happening our game will run and our player obviously because we haven't hooked anything up if we run our game nothing happens but our player will still get killed so we need to add some things to our script to make um, our slider work and basically there's only two things you need to make your slider really work and that is a number to represent uh, where the health should currently be and a number to represent what the full health should be um, and anything else in between or there's nothing else you really need to um, control the slider everything else is just about the setup of the slider itself uh, so we've got a very basic script if we open our player health script here we'll just get this going here okay and um, like I said we've got a max health for the player and we've got a current health and you could do this in whatever script you're using yourself uh, it doesn't really matter too much just as long as you have two numbers that you want to use you could be using it for experience points for the player as they're leveling up you could be using it for any other stat I don't know you could use it for um, a million different things really uh, but uh, we're just looking at the health here for the moment so what we need to do is add a slider to the game and since we're using the UI stuff within unity because we, we went to game object and UI and that's where all these things ha are here uh, because we're using that uh, oops, that's the wrong thing and um, because we're using that we need to make sure that we can access that stuff within unity so we above or sorry below uh, using system collections here we're going to type in using unity engine unity engine dot ui and that means we'll be able to access the ui components of unity for example if we go down here to type in public and we want to control the slider that we created so we're going to create a slider reference here so we're going to say public slider if we didn't add just delete that for a second if we didn't add this little bit 
we wouldn't have we wouldn't be able to access a slider so if we start typing we'd only get slider joint 2d which is a completely different thing that we don't want to use at all so we pop that back in we're going to say public public slider and we're going to just call it the health slider so we're able to make reference to it and what we're going to do then uh, we'll just actually save this uh, and then on our player we'll scroll down to the player health script wait for it to compile in the corner here uh, it should only take a second or two there we go we've got our health slider in here now so we'll just drag our slider into that slot so then we know we're interacting with that specific slider on our screen uh, so if we go back in here now we want to actually do some stuff to it so straight away as soon as the game starts we want to set what the maximum value of the slider will be so we will just say health slider dot max value and the maximum value was obviously going to be an equal to the maximum health that our player can possibly have so we'll say health slider dot max value is equal to max health uh, and then in our update loop uh, basically whatever we our current health of our player is we want to send that out to the slider so we'll just say um, our health slider dot value so health slider dot value is just whatever value the slider currently has so our health slider dot value will be equal to our current health and we'll save that and we'll go back in here And again, once it compiles, now we should see uh, some action actually happen when we play our game. So we'll hit play and we should see the green fill up the slider, as long as everything's working the way we want it to. There we go. And we can see every time we run into this box, our health is going down and then we die and our health is all gone. And that's the basics of adding um, a health bar or any kind of bar to your game. Uh, it's very straightforward and very simple. Um, there's a cup there's a, some other little things we can do we'll just take a look at now um, but that's the main basics of it and no matter what kind of health bar or slider or anything you're using or sorry uh, any any kind of bar or progress bar that you're using a slider is an absolutely perfect and simple way to do it within unity um, so we're actually going to now um, do uh, how it would handle a little countdown and a few little things that we can just make it a little bit different with our slider. So we're just going to uh, duplicate this slider, hit Control and D, or you can right click and duplicate like that. Um, and on this slider, uh, basically we're just gonna add the countdown script that's uh, added to this system. So we're gonna add a countdown like that. And again, this is a very simple script. All it does is we give it a start number and it'll count down from that number to zero. Um, so we're going to do the exact same thing we just did with our player health and add the same stuff to our, this countdown script. So we're going to say using unity, no, no, not editor, engine dot UI. We're going to do a public slider um, and just call it count slider. And this time, instead of having to drag the slider into position we're going to make it find it at the at the start so we're going to say um count slider is equal to get get component and we're going to get the component that is the slider so we're just going to say slider like that because this script is already attached to the current slider so we know that it's on the same object as what we currently have and then we're going to do the exact same thing again of setting the maximum value so our count slider dot max value is equal to count start and then in our update loop here we're going to say count slider uh, dot value is equal to count current now you might notice that on our player health we were using ints to control the health um, so, so basically just whole numbers and then on our countdown we're using floats to control the counter and it doesn't actually matter which number you send to the slider the slider either way is going to be able to handle it uh, so that's another very handy thing about sliders in unity so we'll go back in here uh, let that compile down there we're going to move this slider down a slight little bit uh, just wait for it to there we go we're going to move this second one down to here 
uh, and then we're going to hit play and we should see the slider count down to zero from full so we'll just let this go here and there we go we see our slider counting down as it goes and like I said because it's floats it doesn't actually make a difference it handles floats and ints equally perfectly fine but there is one other thing that we can do with the with the countdown uh, bar say we don't want it to smoothly go like that we want it to go down in uh, little jumps if we just hit whole numbers here like this it'll only go down in increments of one so it'll wait until it'll it'll round the numbers up uh, up or down so we'll see it kind of ticks down like this and what it's actually doing is once it gets to 15 uh, something 0.5 is when it's changing over so if it's say 15.5 it's rounding up to uh, 16 but if it's 15.49 it will be rounding it down to 15 so that's what's kind of going on here it's a very simple and straightforward way of doing it but you might want to kind of do it yourself to chop the numbers within your scripts down to be whole numbers and um, but that's up to you it doesn't really matter and um, but it's just another little option that you have with uh, help bars and sliders in general within Unity. So there you go, that's the basics of creating a simple help bar or progress bar or experience bar or whatever you need for your game. So thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with more Ut Unity tutorial goodness. Bye. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.